I'm telling you all the truth about my labor and delivery experience. It just didn't go as smooth as I thought it was gonna go. All of my worst fears like tearing, pushing for too long, just all of my worst fears came true. You know, everyone tells you, oh, you'll be fine. Oh, your sister had such smooth deliveries. You're probably gonna be the same too. No, I was the complete opposite of my sister. She pushes a couple of times and the kids pop out, like easy. Me, on the other hand, um, not so much. First problem I ran into was the night my water broke. Um, and I kind of mentioned this in the birth vlog, but you know, when you're talking to nurses and doctors and they keep emphasizing on contractions, I just, I, I don't know if it's mommy brain or what, but I just was never under the impression that when your water breaks that you should immediately go to the hospital. Um, but. Um, so when my water broke around 10.30 p.m. to 11 p.m. on September 29th, um, and my water, like, it broke, but it just was kind of, like, trickling down my leg. It wasn't this huge floodgate of just, like, liquid pouring down my leg. It wasn't like the movies. Um, so I thought, oh, that's strange. And then on top of that, was not having any contractions so i feel like i should wait a little before i go in but when i went to the hospital it just seemed like everybody was like well why did you wait so long to come in <laughs> the only reason why i went to the hospital to begin with is because my sister woke up and saw my text and said wait are you at the hospital right now or are you at home and i said i'm at home she's like you should go to the hospital right now so i went it's 4 a.m I finally get settled into the hospital and um, I'm still not feeling contractions. It's just not happening. We mentioned in the birth vlog that I requested to, cause I had no intention of getting the epidural. Um, I wanted to wait until I felt contractions um, and then I would gauge if whether or not I would need it. But the nurse comes in when we're settling in and they're trying to get me hooked up to everything, looks at my left arm to find a vein. And I have really good veins. Like you can see the veins in my arms pretty, pretty good. I don't know if this was the nurse or my veins just were acting up that day, but she puts in the IV and she says that my veins keep, I guess, contracting or tightening. And so she can't get the vein. So she takes out the needle, she puts the needle in another spot and she still can't get the vein. So she finally calls the head nurse. The head nurse comes in and puts the needle in my right arm and she gets the deed done. And after going through that pain of like them shoving a needle in my arm three times, like I just realized like my tolerance for pain is just so low. I, I am just a baby. And so I told David like, I want the epidural. I most definitely want the epidural. And he just like cracks up laughing because pretty much for the last nine months, I've been talking about, well, you know, I wouldn't mind having a natural birth because I think it would be a really cool experience. Like I, I may not ever get this experience again. And it's just funny that it took a nurse poking me three times to get an IV in my arm for me to just be like, no, I need the epidural. <laughs> they give me Pitaisin, which is essentially a drug that induces labor. And, um, you know, I didn't want that to happen. I just, you know what I mean? Like I just wanted it to all happen naturally. So they put me on this drug and I'm sitting there for hours and I finally start to feel contractions. And um, it's like one of those things, be careful what you wish for because the contractions were extremely, extremely painful. I don't even know how to describe the pain. And then they finally got the anesthesiologist to come in to put the epidural in my back. 
And um, I feel like that went pretty smoothly um, because the minute that they did that, I, it just, it instantly, instantly made me feel so good. I couldn't feel any of the contractions. At one point, um, and it was in my birth vlog, but David had brought the camera over to me and I had the chills. Um, I was really, really cold. And shortly after that, the nurse comes in and she sees that I'm all bundled up and she is like, oh, is everything okay? And I'm like, I'm actually really, really cold. I have the chills. So she checks my temperature and realizes that I have a fever. She was really concerned because if I have a fever, that means the baby is going to have, I guess, she didn't necessarily say that the baby was gonna have a fever, but she did say that he would technically be one degree higher than my temperature. So essentially saying that he would have a fever as well. So they, I think, gave me some sort of medicine like Tylenol or something to break the fever. Finally, I break the fever, the nurse comes in checks how far dilated I am. She's like, oh, you're 10 centimeters. We're gonna start pushing. And so I'm ready. I'm ready to start pushing. And um, I keep pushing. I'm pushing for three freaking hours. And it is so difficult, such a difficult task to push for that long because I haven't eaten since 8.30 the previous night. I haven't, like, I'm starving. I have, like, no energy, but then somehow I'm, like, finding the energy to push as hard as I can. What the nurses were saying as I was pushing is that the baby would move a little every time I'd push, but then as soon as I'd let go, it would go, he would go right back in. So he was like stuck in my pelvis bone. He just, it, it just was not happening. He was not coming out of there. And then finally, my OBGYN comes in, um, which they do. The doctors always come in at the very last second. And um, I push a couple of times and she's like, okay, you know what? I have an alternative for you. And let me pull it up, what it's called, but um, she said that we can do a vacuum extraction. Well, it's like a suction cup that's going to help pull the baby out. She said, I'm gonna still have to push. <laughs> so I'm not just gonna be laying there. I still gotta do work. And then um, is it gonna hurt the baby? Is it gonna hurt me? You know, that sort of thing. And so I quickly say, Yes, because I am getting to a point while I'm pushing where I'm just starting to give up. Like at this point, I am crying. I'm looking at my doctor and I am telling her like, I can't do this. I cannot do this. I'm looking at David. I'm like starting to freak out. When she gives me this option, I just quickly say yes. And she puts it in there and I push so freaking hard and he comes out. And so it's his head and like his shoulders. And my doctor looks at me and she tells me, oh, do you want to pull him out? And at first, like I was just so, I don't know, caught off guard, <laughs> caught off guard that she'd asked me something like that. And so the craziest thing is that I got to deliver him. The weirdest part is that his eyes were open. Like he was looking at me as I was pulling him out. And I even asked David just to verify, cause like, you know, at that point I was just so delirious, fatigued that I don't know if maybe I was seeing things, but um, he ended up crying and they immediately, you know, give him to me for skin to skin contact. And this is the best part 
of this whole experience because he's crying, um, the baby is crying, and um, you know, David and I are kind of like hovering over him and holding him and we start talking to him and he stops crying and he's just looking at me in my eyes. He's looking at David in his eyes and he's looking at us as we're talking to him. And like, <laughs> I was telling David that like it's so crazy because in that moment, it's like, he knew that we were his parents. Like, I'm holding him and he just looked so, like, safe. And he felt safe, like, he just felt like he was home versus, like, you know, when he's with the nurse or the doctor, he's, like, screaming his head off. I don't know, made me feel so reassured that like we're ready for parenthood i just never experienced something like that like that kind of connection that was my labor and delivery experience um i think i mentioned everything that oh my goodness i almost forgot i tore so i had a first degree tear and um that really scarred me like mentally not physically <laughs> i'm still recovering i mean when you tear i almost feel like that's a c-section to your vagina like you have to be so careful moving around the only thing you can carry is really your baby you shouldn't be lifting anything heavy um there's been so many times in the last two weeks i've been so paranoid about re-tearing um, the stitching so that's been frightening because it's not like I can look down there and see how everything is so yeah almost forgot that little detail <laughs> so for this next portion of the vlog I want to share with you all Shelby's nursery I've been wanting to talk about this nursery for so long and I just haven't I have so much footage of David and I working on this nursery from, you know, choosing the paint color, painting the walls, putting together the dresser, uh, the crib. I still have a lot of things that I need to do in here to finalize um, this nursery, or at least the things that we do have because I'm waiting on a couple more things to arrive in the mail before I finalize the nursery. The theme for Shelby's nursery is a Studio Ghibli forest theme. Um, and I wouldn't even call, I mean, I wouldn't even necessarily say it's a theme. It's just more so the essence of a forest theme because it's not like I have trees painted on the walls or anything like that. You know, I picked a wall color um, that's a d darker shade of green that I think emulates a forest. Oh my God, is that a bald patch? I think so. I think I'm starting to lose my hair. We decided to go with Sherwin Williams because our whole house is um, painted with Sherwin Williams paint. And so we decided to go with Jaded Dragon is the name of this shade. And I absolutely love it. I was a little hesitant on this shade of green because um, it is darker. And I feel like because this is already a somewhat small room, I feel like when you have a color like this, it might make the room feel even smaller. So. That was my fear, but once we got the paint on the walls, I just knew we made the right decision. Another thing we did to bring out the forest theme that we're going for is to have some wooden elements in the room. And so um, here, let me show you guys his crib. Oops. Alrighty, so 
Um, his crib, the sheets have not arrived. <laughs> it's right now being used as a storage unit. I just have like a whole bunch of stuff in here. He, um, Shelby is not sleeping in this crib currently. Um, he's, sne he's sleeping in a snoo bassinet. I love the rounded corners. It's very modern. And then, um, I mean, we have a white chair and then the legs are pretty much the same color as the crib. And then we have that lamp there in the corner, which is actually from Ikea. I'm obsessed with that lamp. And then we have a bookshelf, a little bookshelf here um, that we still need to hang up. We're gonna do that today. And then these um, are like floating bookshelves that are gonna go above this bookshelf. I kind of have a good idea of like what books I want to display and then which ones are gonna be stored in the bigger in the bigger bookcase. And then I have a second one over there as well. Oh my God, this stool. I knew the minute I saw this on Amazon, I had to get it. It's just such a good quality stool. It's heavy and it was also really inexpensive. I'm obsessed. I definitely needed to have that. And it's actually very useful because at night when I'm nursing, Shelby, I usually have like his bottles, binkies, like on that stool. So very, very useful. And then what are some other wooden elements? I mean, I do have these baskets, these um, hanging baskets. I actually got these baskets from H&M. I did mention Studio Ghibli and if you don't know what Studio Ghibli is, it's a Japanese production company. They've produced Spirited Away, Kiki's Delivery Service, movies like that. And so the way that I'm, you know, turning this into a Studio Ghibli nursery is of, of course having a whole bunch of characters from the movie displayed in the nursery. So first and foremost, we have Totoro. He is, I don't know if I'm gonna keep him in this basket. I might actually put him on the shelf. We have No Face here from Spirited Away, um, the cat bus from Totoro, and then we have Gigi from Kiki's Delivery Service. Um, I'm definitely going to keep these here and hang this basket. Um, you know, initially I was planning on hanging these baskets next to this bookshelf. But because I have my beehive hanging right there, I think it's just too much going on on this side of the wall. So I'm going to leave this blank for right now and then um, I'm going to hang this one on that side of the wall. But with these hooks, these wall hooks, super, super cute, very, very minimal. Um, I think I'm going to hang because it came with five. Oh, no, I'm sorry. It came with eight, but I think I'm going to put five on that side of the wall next to the closet. I like that because I can hang that basket, I can hang like a hat, a jacket, whatever the case may be. I think this is a really nice addition. It isn't just decor, but it's super functional. So let me go over a couple of the Studio Ghibli items that I have that I'm gonna be putting in his nursery. Um, first, we have this paper theater. This is going to be a little project that David and I do. Um, yeah, it looks like it's like a 3D picture. And then I have this puzzle here. Oh my goodness. Like, one of my favorite movies. I love Spirited Away. I could watch it every day, honestly. Um, but this is a puzzle here. I don't think I want to put this together and hang the puzzle on the wall. Um, I think I just want this to be like an activity that we do later on when we're up for it. So I'm gonna leave the pieces in the box and just place the box like on the bookshelf. Last but not least, I bought these really, really cool collectible postcards um, that are from a bunch of Studio Ghibli films from 1984 to 2014. And I've already gone through all of them 
and picked out the ones that I want to put up. Um, so what I'm going to do with these is kind of make a collage on this side of the wall above the changing table because it's looking a bit plain over there. There are a couple of DIY projects that I want to attempt. So there's this character in the movie um, Totoro and I believe they're also in Spirited Away but they're these little like all creatures i believe they're spirits and in totoro they come from the corners of the room so i'm hoping that i can turn that character into a wall decal with my cricket and place it in the corner of the room i think it'd be so cool so cool today we're just gonna hang some things up get this area cleaned out i'm telling you i mean we, we've been coming in here and feeding Shelby at night and let me tell you my Virgo self is irritated by this mess so the goal today is to clear all of this out and um, make this look like an actual nursery. <laughs> This week, David and I started taking shifts on watching Shelby because for the first two weeks, David and I, we were doing everything together. We were waking up for 3 a.m. feedings together and uh, we realized that that was a lot on both of us. Um, but I mean, the reason we did that was because neither one of us have been around a baby this small and you know we were kind of leaning on each other to you know just figure things out together um you know how to take care of a newborn and so now that we have a little bit more confidence uh we decided to take shifts because you guys will not believe it but the fact that i wasn't getting a lot of sleep last week i made myself sick like i was like i had a fever that just came out of nowhere i didn't have a runny nose i haven't been around other people so i didn't catch anything from anyone not congested no i would just break out in a fever and have chills and then i would sweat like yeah, it was pretty, pretty bad. I was actually worried for myself. We thought maybe it was COVID, but 
it wasn't. It's just sleep deprivation. <laughs> And so um, we started taking shifts. So this is the schedule. Um, I go to sleep at 8 p.m. and then I wake up at 2 p.m. so that I get at least a solid five hours, five to six hours of sleep. And then we switch at 2 a.m. and then I'm up till about 2 a.m., 7 to 8 a.m. Um, and depending on what kind of a night I've had, sometimes, you know, I'll just make breakfast with David and then go right back to sleep. Or, you know, if I've had a good night's rest, then I'm up pretty much for the rest of the day. Um, I might be able to find a nap here or there um, midday. But other than that, that's pretty much the sleeping schedule. Today's been like the fourth or fifth day we've done this and I don't know it's working pretty well for me I don't break out into fevers anymore I feel confident that this sleeping schedule is gonna work out for us at this time I find myself eating a snack because I've just pumped and I'm so hungry after pumping um, I'll catch up on YouTube videos that I haven't watched all week. Um, I clean. Sometimes I'll do like laundry. I'll wash bottles. Tidy up the house. Um, that sort of thing. Oh my gosh, I'm trying to incorporate editing at this time. Because I'm so behind on all of my YouTube videos for this month. So trying to incorporate work back into my schedule but yeah um i just pumped here it is so this is my right boob that is absolutely thriving just pumped 60 mils which is about two ounces amazing i love that and then my left side is a struggling. I don't know what happened. At one point, I was pumping about two ounces from each side. And then, I don't know, it's gone down. Like, this is only 25. I don't know if that's a bad sign that, like, once you've peaked and you start to go down in your supply if there's any coming back from that i hope that i can bring it back i've been drinking lots of water i started eating oatmeal so i'm going to try to eat that every day and then um oh my gosh i have these brownies let me show you guys these brownies okay so these are lactation brownies from Milky Mama. Um, I ordered these online and I had like a big pack sent to me. So I also try to eat these every day. Um, my sister bought these when she was pregnant and she said it helped her supply. So if anyone out there has any advice on how to bring back your milk supply after it's peaked, Please let me know.